there is a lack of adequate climate change information, knowledge, and long-term period data for researchers, planners, policymakers, and the general public. Information is scarce on available adaptation and mitigation measures, as well as the opportunities the problem presents. This calls for public education and raising public awareness about the challenges and how to address them. I am informed that this conference will be addressed by eminent persons and experts in the tourism industry from all over the world. These experts will look at various aspects of climate change ranging from greenhouse effects arising from tourism-related and industrial activities to redemptive policies and measures. In Zambia, my government has taken climate change seriously and has put in place policies, strategies, and plans to address this challenge. We are activating the National Adaptation Program of Action, the National Policy on Environment, and now the National Climate Change Response Strategy, which is yet to be adopted. Out of these strategies, policies, and plans, a number of programs and projects have been formulated and are underway. These include the reducing of em emissions, uh, deforestation, and desertification, abbreviated as REDD programs. The pilot program on climate resilience and the adaptation projects in agriculture. We have also taken steps to sensitize our people in the rural areas who we think are the most vulnerable to climate change. In this regard, government efforts have been greatly supplemented by our vibrant civil society organizations working around issues of climate change. For this, I salute them. I'd like to take this opportunity also to salute the Minister of Tourism and uh, her staff at the Ministry for their enthusiasm in ensuring that we combat problems arising from climate change. I'm aware that tourism flourishes where there is where there is peace. Therefore, as we look at the prospects of tourism growth in Africa and the developing world at large, it is also important to focus on ways and means of guaranteeing peace in our nations. Tourists will only travel to a location where peace is not at risk of disruption. Let us play our part to promote <coughs> dialogue on all political fronts where there are differences of opinion. As you may be aware, <coughs> Zambia will hold tripartite elections this year. There is a tendency for international visitors to shy away from countries facing elections for fear of instability or bloodshed. Let me take this opportunity to indicate that Zambia has held so far <coughs> 10 very peaceful general elections and one presidential by-election since our independence in 1964. We do not need to worry about the Zambian people, as you heard from our first president. We are serious about our peace. Sometimes we politicians use strong language and have firm agreements <laughs> Thank you. We left this from you, Dr. Lowe. <laughs> <laughs>
drink his water. And I remember my mother seeing him on television drinking his water. Does he put sugar in it? <laughs> use strong language and have firm disagreements on issues of policy, but our voters are always friendly, hospitable, and peace-loving. I cannot pretend that we have not experienced incidences like spor sporadic riots, but of the whole history attests that Zambia is absolutely stable. I therefore invite visitors from all over the world to come and visit our beautiful country. Your safety is guaranteed by the Zambian people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the hosting of this conference presents Zambia with a window of showcase to showcase and present the tourism and investment opportunities on offer. It is my expectation that the conference participants will find time to visit the Victoria Falls, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It belongs to Zimbabwe and Zambia, by the way. That the conference participants will find time to visit the Victoria Falls one of the several nat seven natural wonders of the world, as well as any of the 19 national parks and 36 game management areas that are teeming with diverse wildlife. You are also welcome to visit any of the 20 plus uh, magnificent waterfalls that are found all over our country. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I want to appreciate and salute all the conference participants from all over the world. I wish you a wonderful stay in Zambia, and I can assure you that you will enjoy the hospitality that my country has to offer. I now declare this conference officially open, and thank God for our presence. Thank you.